power of God came on him and opened up his spiritual eyes. And he was able to read, he was able to look at people and see who was bound. Some women had chains around them, wrapped around them. They were bound by ropes and chains. He was able to read people's uh, businesses and stuff. It's a, it's a gift of God that he wants to release to us where you'll be able to read people's mail, read their life, read what's going on in life, where the devil is, where he's operating in. You can literally see people that are bound, those who are afflicted, uh, the family history, the, the curses that are operating. And so I'm believing God for this gift. I'm believing God to open up this, our spiritual eyes we can see you literally see in the spirit. You literally see the person. You literally see whether there's demons on them, what's going on them. It's a gift of God. It's a discernment gift that God is using in this hour to get people completely free. You've been going, you've been through some things. Um, let, me, let me turn my thing on here before I get started. I'm being ripped off. I'm not going to be long, but uh, I had a cold. My wife spitting disease around, <laughs> coughing and hacking and carrying on. And I had to fight. I had to go sleep on the couch. I'm not getting what you got. I'm staying away. And I fought it off. I thank you, Jesus. But uh, as we begin to read, now I read. I, I, I get words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and I and I see. I see. It's almost like a billboard in the spirit. It's almost like it's, it's not that I'm seeing a billboard. I'm seeing letters and 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 I see tags and I see names over people's heads and. And, and, and that gift, but it's, the gift is not as strong as it needs to be for this end time, uh, because uh, uh, we got to deal with some rough stuff. We're dealing with some 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 stuff that is, you know, uh, to deal with rest of development. Last week, uh, if you go into the projects, you go into the South Side of Chicago, West Side of Chicago. I mean, these people are arrested development. There's, they, they don't grow after 16, 15, 16. They act like kids. They be 40 years old and and, and act like kids and. Uh, the, 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 the enemy has arrested their development and there's no education, there's no, they're not getting educated, they're not getting taught, the fathers are not in the homes, the mothers are no longer uh, teaching the children, they don't know how to teach their children because they had children out of wedlock and stuff. So we got a mess going on, but God wants these people free. And we can't give up uh, 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 trying to get them free and working to get them free. And so we need to be able to see and know what's going on. You ever walk past people in the store and you know they're crippled and handicapped and you say, Lord, I wish I had anointing to, uh, what, 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 is that, what is their issue and what, what is their problem? I believe God wants to give us those giftings that you can walk into Walmart and start calling out people and, and getting people healed and talking to people in the aisles and say, this is what's going on and getting them free. We got to have the tools to bring in the harvest that we need. We got to have the spiritual tools. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling out of strongholds. So the Lord's been really, uh, it dealt me again. I said, Lord, I just ministered on back in, in, in May about uh, giving us eyes of understanding that we'll understand. Now, we're coming into the year of pay, the mouth, what you speak out of the mouth. We were, we were in the time of, the, of, of seeing, uh, of, of hay, of seeing something. But now God wants to give us what we see, we can vocalize what we're seeing and what we're, we're seeing in the spirit. So I'm going to go over some scriptures here real quickly. It's not going to be a long message. Uh, uh, like I said, I was fighting this cold off, and I, I feel the Lord wanted me to dig back into this a little bit more so we get to understand. I want you to believe it. Believe for the giftings. If I, I've noticed that uh, even Brother Kurt, he's been uh, the two, two or three times he's got up to teach on Tuesday night, he's been talking about visions and dreams, and he's been having dreams and he's, been, and he's getting more dreams and more visions because he's hungry for it. He's looking for it and God is, is giving it to us. Emmanuel said, I call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, if you call him in those situations, why can't we call on him in the gifts yeah. and the anointings and desire? I think we, uh, to be honest with you, I think we've, we've, we've been sitting back being lazy. Yeah. I mean, we can cast out the devil. I mean, we can you know, lay hands on us, but we really ain't tapped in trying to get in a little deeper into the things of God, because we haven't seen all the stuff that God has for us. Yeah. We've only been on the surface. You know, you watch uh, a Benny Hinn blow on people. You go, why he do that? And, and my wife was asking, I was, we were watching the program, uh, uh, Alf Lucal in South Africa, and, and she was saying, well, well, well what's going, how are you doing all that? Why, why are these people? I said, there are angels all over the room, and the angels are working with him, 
and there are angels that stand by people and point to them and he can see in the spirit and the angels are pointing, shine a light on that one person and, and he calls them out and they, he put, they put their name up, a placard up with their name over, you know, telling them what they is and then they give them the whole history and he's just reading what they're all about. Who their father was, the mother was, and stuff like that. Those are gifts of, there's a gifting of God that he wants to release in the earth. So I'm praying that God would enlighten our eyes and give us understanding. So I'm going to start at the beginning in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. It says, God doth know that in the day you do eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that she desired, it was pleasant to the eyes, the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her. He did eat. And the eyes of them were both were open. And they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves aprons. So what's happening is we need to, pray. I'm believing God, we need to pray the reverse. Lord, shut my eyes. The eyes became open to the natural. And the eyes closed to the spirit. So our eyes are open to the natural and we can't see in the spirit. So Lord, close my natural eyes that I may see in the spirit. I've been praying, Lord, open my spiritual eyes, but I don't need to have to, but... Maybe I need to close my natural eyes and begin to see in the spirit people's situations and people, people's lives. Because if you look at people, you can read them wrong. But if you're looking at them in the spirit, you're not going to get it wrong. Amen? In Genesis uh, 21, verse 18 and 19, we know this story. Uh, Hagar and uh, uh, Abraham had a... a Ishmael and, 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 and the wife rose up and they begin to fight and Ishmael begin to beat up on uh, Isaac and uh, uh, she said, get, get that boy out of here. And they told, told Hagar, you got to go. And Hagar was kicked out into the desert, into the wilderness to take the boy and go. And gave him a little provision. And took a, but they ran out of water. And in Genesis 21, she was crying and she had left the child over there and let him go die and she was going to go sit and watch him die. And, and the Lord spoke and says, Arise, lift up the lad, hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes. And she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle w with water and gave the lad drink. Now, this is just the opposite. I believe that that well was not there, but in the spirit it was. And God opened up her spiritual eyes to see a well in the spirit realm. And she went over there and drank out of the well in the spirit realm. It was not there because she was ready to die. She didn't see the well. It was nowhere around. But God opened her eyes to see the spirit in the spirit. And sometimes we look at our issues and our problems and we need to go look in the spirit for the answer. We need to see in the spirit for the answer. Amen. You might not have any money in your wallet or in your check, but if you go into the spirit for the answer, Jesus, uh, Jesus said, go find the first fish you find. You'll find a coin in his mouth. He'll give you instruction on what to do. And he'll say, I got you. I got it covered. I got it covered. All you got to do is sit back and relax. Because now you had already seen the answer is coming. Obedience opens you to what you can't see. God told Abraham, the very son that I gave you to see, that prophesied is you're going to have a child. Your wife laughed and, and said, I ain't going to walk in this bee. And then later on, now you want me to kill the very thing that you blessed me with. And I can't see my way out of this thing. I got to obey because God was testing him and trying him. And how many have been through a test? How many have been through a test and you know if you had not went, did what you did, you probably would have failed that test. Oh, yeah. You know the enemy was waiting on you to mess up. He was waiting on you to get you. But you said, no, I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm stay with the Lord. I'm going to do what he tell me to do. And God. So Abraham was sitting there getting ready to kill his child in Genesis 22. I said, it's time for your ram. Time for you to see what you can't see. Now, I know he had to be up on that mountain. And I know he, when he went to put that boy up on the tree, there wasn't no ram nowhere around him. You've been up on a mountain all around you, there's nothing around you. 
Verse 22, verse 12 says, he said, lay not your hand upon the lad. He was getting ready to kill him. Neither do, oh man, he's getting ready to get, <laughs> let, he was getting ready to kill him. See, sometimes we get ready to kill something. All right, all right. Sometimes we get ready to kill something. I'm going I'm to I'm have to do something about this instead of waiting on the Lord. I'm going to kill this thing right then and I know how to kill it. But the Lord said, no, you need to s step back. I, I can put my mouth on it if I want to, but the Lord said, no, keep your mouth shut. Especially in that straight place, that tight place where you want to lash out, you want to, you want to, you, you want, you want to talk back, you want to give them a piece of your mind, you know. But I need to keep the peace. I got to keep, keep a level head in this situation. I get mess it up if I open up my mouth, and I got to be still. I'm gonna, uh, sh 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 quiet yourself, soul. Be, be quiet. Zip your lip. Don't, don't say nothing, because I know if I say something, it's gonna mess up the whole thing. Now I didn't suffer this long. I can suffer a little bit more, and I'm gonna get through this situation. Do not the thing unto him, for you, for I, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you and I withheld thy son and thy only son from me. See, God will test us to see whether we will give it up or not. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up a burnt offering instead of his son. Now I know if he came up the mountain, there wasn't no ram when he came up the path. Right. And all of a sudden, his eyes open up and he see a ram in the bush. I'm here to tell you this morning, your ram is ready. Amen? Your ram in the bush is ready. Your ram is there and you don't have to sacrifice yourself. You can sacrifice the ram. God's got a ram in the bush for you. Hallelujah. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He's our provider. And so as I prophesy your house, he's going to provide your house. He's got to provide your house. He's got to give up your house. He'll call me a liar if as a prophet of the most high God if I say you're going to get a house and you don't get the house that makes God look bad and make me look bad and I'm not going to look bad because God said say it so I'm saying your house is coming hallelujah he will supply all your stuff amen hallelujah coming up out of that house Hallelujah. I don't, Emma, I don't know if you plan on moving your house, but I see you moving out that house. I don't know what your husband's thinking about that house, but you're leaving that house. That house is not your house. That house is old. That is Lodi Bar. That's time for you to go. You got to get up out of that house. God's got another thing for you. I just keep seeing it. I've been seeing it over the weeks. I keep seeing it. I don't see you move. I said, Pastor, I'm leaving that house. I'm leaving that house. I'm leaving that house. I'm leaving that house. So get ready to leave your house. Get to the grandkids and keep on going. <laughs> They like gathering over there anyway. Just give it to them. Yeah, we go on this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, what you can't see can kill you. That's why God wants our eyes open so we don't get knocked off and by the enemy and, and what you can't see. In Numbers 22, verse 31, you know the story of, of, of Balaam. God told Balaam, said, don't go with Balak, Barak. He wants you to, he, he, don't go with it. And he pressed God. And God said, okay, go ahead and go. I done told you not to go, but you're going to do it anyway. You're not going to obey me anyway. You're going to keep, you say, how many keep going to God for the same thing? God said no, and you keep going trying to make them do it. And then you get tired. Go on and do it then. You tell your children the same thing. All right, I done told you now. I told you now. Don't be crying now. now you, I told you don't go out there and have that baby. Now you got the baby. Now the baby's big, and now you got to take care of it. But, oh, but you didn't want to hear that then. Huh, man? You was grown 21, three times seven and, and more. You hear me? No, now you got to pay the piper. You got to pay the price. Don't cry, you started it. The, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. He opened up his eyes. Balaam had gotten to the place where, where the donkey had crushed his leg against the wall and he could not even see. The jackass could see the angel, but Balaam couldn't see the angel. He saw the angel of the Lord standing in his way and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. When you get in the presence of God, you're going to fall flat. And the angel of the Lord said, Wherefore have you smitten your ass these three times? Why are you beating on the ass? Behold, I went out to withstand you because your way is perverse before me. So we got to be make sure that our ways are right before the Lord, and we're in obedience before the Lord. And he said, The ass saw me. He had spiritual eyes to see me, but you didn't. And turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, 
Surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. So even, even animals can see in the spirit. Animals can sense in the spirit. I got a dog. My daughter got that other new dog, and that dog scared of me. I said, you got a demon. I know you had a devil in there. That's why you keep running from me, because I can see your little nasty self. When I come in the room, she whoop, run out the other room. But she run up to everybody else but me. I said, okay, I got, I got your number. You got a little demon running around there. I know that old spirit of demon in you. Crazy little dog. <laughs> so Balaam lift up his eyes. So, so, so God had told him, don't go with, with Barak. And he said, well, prophesy over Israel. And he prophesied. He said, no, don't prophesy that. You prophesy good stuff. And so he said, come on, on let's go up on this mountain here. And when he went up to the mountain and he looked down, he, could, he saw in the spirit and he could only prophesy what he was seeing in the spirit. He said, Balaam lifted up his eyes. He saw Israel abiding in his tents according to the tribes. And the spirit of God came upon him and he took out this parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open have said. He have said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance by having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents and thy tabernacles, O Israel. So he began to prophesy how great Israel was going to be, how multiply, how they would multiply the sand of the sea and, and how great they are. And the guy said, don't prophesy that. He said, I got to prophesy what I see. I got to speak what I see. He, he said, I got to go. I've seen Israel, the Spirit of the Lord coming. I'm seeing it. Now I'm giving pay, voice, yeah. mouth to what I'm seeing. 2020 is the time you're going to give voice to what you've seen in the spirit. You're going to give voice to what you've seen in the spirit. Everybody's watching CNN and in mainstream news and everything, and they're, and, and they're looking at that, but they're not looking at what God is doing in the spirit realm to deal with it. So, oh, woe is me. Oh, they're going to impeach Trump. Oh, no, they, God's in control. He's got an army that has taken over the capital. The angels of the Lord are ascending and ascending out of the capital and, and, and cleaning out the swamp in the capital. The angels of the Lord are encamped on the east coast and the west coast and ready to push through America with a re great revival. You got to begin to see what's going on in the spirit and not look at all this mess that's going on around us and begin to speak what you see. That's the only thing that's going to change around our neighborhoods. The only thing that's going to change around uh, the atmosphere in some of these cities is to begin to speak what God is speaking. We understand and we know that the stronghold, the biggest stronghold of Satan is in California. Uh, 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 Lucifer, Lucifer's headquarters is in California. That's the, that is the headquarters over America. That is where all the occultists, all the witches and warlocks, that's where everybody goes, uh, where the rappers and, and, and the hip-hop rappers and all of them sell their soul to Satan is in California. On the East Coast, it's the same thing. They got demonic uh, witches and warlocks in Maine and, and Boston and all that kind of mess going on there. So we got two opposing, two forces of, of wickedness principalities that, get, that God is getting ready to deal with. So you got to utter what you see. You got to speak what you see and begin to declare what you see. But God's going to open up your eyes. So I don't want you to be scared when it happens. Because it can happen in an instant. God will open up your eyes in an instant. You have an open vision right where you are. You can have an open vision sitting at your desk. You can have an open vision sitting in a restaurant and begin to see and understand. And people say, what's wrong with you? You're just sitting there in a trance. But you've seen things in the spirit realm. I was sitting at my desk about the day after I got saved. I was sitting at my desk in my cubicle. And I mean, like a big screen just opened up. I mean, I'm looking at heaven. I'm looking at the, the castle. I'm looking at uh, uh, the, the, the colors and all that thing. And, and the voice of God speaking. And I'm, I'm sitting at my desk. Nobody around me. I'm just, nobody would have believed that I saw what I saw and heard what I heard. <laughs> but God spoke. Out of, that, out of that situation, he speaks to you. And I'm telling you, once God speaks to you, it sticks in you forever. Yeah. You don't, you, 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 that's why the Bible says, uh, if the spirit of God is in you, you're not going to sin. When God's spirit is in you, you don't want to sin. Yeah, you don't need to sin. 
You got the king of kings. I can always run into my strong tower and be safe in any situation. He will never leave me nor forsake me. The devil can't touch me. The devil can't do anything he wants to do to me. I'm called of God, anointed by God, and, and, and a minister of God. So the devil just can't do what he wants to do. He's tried. His flesh gets in the way sometimes, but you got to subdue it, bring it back in. But anyway, he prophesied the vision. Another situation. Israel was to be intact. King Saul was king and everybody had ran, hidden their tents and stuff. And uh, King Saul made a decree that nobody would eat anything until the Lord gave us the victory. In the first Samuel 14, Jonathan, his son, did not hear the edict that his father said, nobody can eat anything until we get the victory from morning to noon to, to after the fight. But Jonathan heard not whether his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore, he put forth the end of his rod that was in his hand. He dipped it in a honeycomb, put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Interesting. His eyes were enlightened. How his, his eyes were set on fire. His eyes were set ablaze. Light came in. Revelation came in. He had an encounter with God. His eyes became enlightened. His eyes were, his spiritual eyes were open. And then as one of the people said, thy father strictly charged the people with having oath saying, cursed is he that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, my father hath troubled the land. See, I pray how my eyes have been opened because I tasted of this honey. His eyes were open, and he saw the victory. He already saw God's army around him. He already saw that they had the victory. He said, my father made a foolish mistake. He, he didn't know that the army of the Lord was fighting for us. The army of the Lord was, I have seen. My eyes have been open uh, uh, in the spirit realm. So the word enlightened means to make luminous. Break up day. How do you get this luminous light? Is right here in this word. As you read this word, as you meditate on this word, God will give you a rhema word. You know, a rhema word is you're reading the scripture, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by him, by made up. The words literally jump off the page, they become alive. They literally come alive. That's a rhema word for you. When you get that type of word and you're reading the scripture and the, and the scripture just jumps off the page at you, that's a promise from God yeah. because this is his word and his word is alive. Yeah. And so when you're reading certain things, or reading certain scriptures, certain giftings come into your eyes, just like we know that demons come through our eyes if we watch certain stuff. Demons come in if we smoke certain stuff or we drink certain stuff. Demons come in too. So your eyes are the gateway. The Bible says eyes are the gateway to the soul. And so we have to make sure that, I, Lord, close my natural eyes, open up my spiritual eyes. And we have not because we ask not. Anybody ask, Lord, open my spiritual eyes in any situations? When you're in a situation, Lord, let me see this in the spirit. We got to start asking. Give me the answer, Lord. Let me see this in the spirit. What's going on in this situation? That's why uh, I always do that. I always do that. Somebody call, uh, Sister so and so is in the hospital. I go talk to God. I say, okay, Lord, what's going on? Let me see what's going on. Do I need to go or do I need to stay home? I go and look and see. Oh, you got this? I'll stay home. Because I don't have to go if God's already got it. I only go in, in, in tough cases, in the hard cases. Amen. And you know, if I always tell you, if I come up to the hospital, you got to get up. You can't, you can't stay there. I ain't coming up there to pray for you for you to lay in the bed. Get up and get out because by your, your stripes, you have been healed. Amen. Amen. Me wasting my time. I got time. That's valuable time. I'll come pray for you, but you got to get up. Amen. Rise out of your deathbed. Here's another situation. Uh, 2 Kings 6, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open up his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw. Ask the Lord to open your eyes so you can see. Lord, open our eyes so we can see in the spirit. Open our eyes so we can see in the spirit. 
and the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. Verse 20, and it came to pass when they were come to Samaria, Elisha said, open the eyes of these men. Now the men came and surrounded him, and Elisha, you're going the wrong way, and he said, Lord, blind them. So he blinded them. Now, he, wasn't, he was leading them. He blinded them with a spiritual blindness that what they saw in the natural is what not they were seeing. I don't know how to explain this. But God has the ability to make people see things that are not there. Maybe, that, maybe, that, maybe that's, that's, that's there. An illusion. You, you, you think you're seeing something, but you, it's really not there. God has that ability to do that. And so here they are, they're thinking they're going, looking at this scene or something, and, and God has already closed their eyes, and they don't even know that they're going into the camp of the Israelites. He said, open these eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened up their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Wait a minute, how did we get to Samaria? We was walking the other way, and now we're in Samaria. God had changed the picture, the scene. And what they were looking at, and they thought they were looking at one direction, and God is taking them another direction. There's a, there is a power that we have not tapped into. I'm just what I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm pounding this thing. There's a, an anointing. There's a power that we have not tapped into that God wants to release. So I don't want you to be shocked when you start seeing. You stand up there talking to people, and all of a sudden you start seeing names and start seeing demons in people and stuff. You know, don't go, oh, you got a demon. No. <laughs> Now, you got to ask, okay, Lord, why are you showing me this? Why am I seeing this demon in this person? What do you want me to do with this demon? Now, if God shows you something, he always shows you for you to do something about it. But find out what he wants you to do. How do you approach that person? You know, sister, uh, you know, I want, can I pray for you? I see something in your life that uh, God wants to set you free, and this, this thing has been binding you with you having a problem with drinking, and you having a problem with cigarettes and stuff. Yeah, how you know? I can see the demon. I ain't gonna, don't tell them you can see the demon. Just say, I want to pray for you and cast that thing out of them. So he opened their eyes and they saw they were in the midst of Samaria. Zechariah was another prophet. He stu- be, uh, just some scripture, Zechariah 1.18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw and behold four horns. He was seeing this in the spirit. Zechariah 2.1. I lifted up my eyes again and looked, behold, a man with a measuring uh, uh, a line in his hand. He was looking at things that were taking place in the spirit realm. He was looking at it from the natural realm, but he was seeing it in the spirit. Uh, Zechariah 4 and 10. Who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord that run to and fro through the whole earth. There are eyes of the Lord, angels of the Lord, running to and fro the whole earth, looking to show themselves strong on behalf of them that are weak. And, and he said, they shall see, they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the land. There's a plummet. I, I released that last year, year before. The plumb line has been dropped from righteousness and unrighteous, the scourge and from clean from unclean. The plumb line has already been brought. A plumb line is a, is a, is a level uh, that, that sets a straight line. And God said, I've dropped the plumb line. And people will see. We're seeing the plumb line. America is almost divided right in half right now. Half for Trump, half not for Trump. I've split. The spirit of division is over this nation. Because one half is seeing and the other half is not seeing. And those that don't see think you, they're fighting the ones that do see, and, and, and the ones that do see, you say, you stupid because you can't see. And the ones that open up and say, you stupid because I see and you don't see. You know, it's one seeing the natural and one seeing in the spirit. They put a picture up, uh, I don't know if you've seen that lady, when, uh, when they announced that President Trump became president, and she was sitting on the steps, and she was screaming, no! I mean, she was hollering, no! Messed up our vision and our plan. Oh, she was screaming and hollering. She was one of those abortionists. You know, they, they, were, they, were, they, they, they had a fit. Fall all on the crying on the ground. And Jesus. Zechariah 5.1, I turned and I lift up my eyes, lift up my eyes and looked. 
and behold, there's a flying rope. Sometimes we got our head down praying, shade it up. Sometimes you need to lift up, look around, see. You, there, there, are, there are angels with you. Know that you have angels assigned to you, even when you're praying, even uh, uh, times. There have been times uh, 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 that I was worshiping, and I felt somebody hand on my shoulder. You ever had that? You look around, who's touching me? Ain't nobody, nobody around you. You can feel a touch, or you feel, uh, I feel mantles being, uh, like a blanket being placed on over it when you're in prayer. That's the, the Holy Spirit. That's the angels of the Lord ministering, anointing you. Uh, see, a lot of times you get your anointment through your prayer. It don't come from me. It comes from your prayer time. I just make it shine a little bit more, buff it a little bit, what's already on you, Amen. That's my job. You are, but you pray. Your prayer time is where your mantles are released to you. You have not because you ask not. So God is pressing us to press into this deeper realm of the spirit. Matthew, this is the, really the, 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 the meat of what I want to talk about a little bit. In Matthew 13, verse 16, it says, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Elias, which said, Hearing... Ye shall hear and shall not understand. Seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For this people heart is waxed draw, gross, their ears are dull of hearing, the eyes they have closed, the eyes, the spiritual eyes they have closed. Least any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, the spiritual ears, and should understand with their heart, should be converted, and I should heal them. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. I was listening to, uh, the, last night, I listened to the uh, guy, he was a, a chief occultist, chief way up in, in the occult. And uh, he got delivered from the stronghold, from that occultism. He was very, very strong in it. And they were asking him a question. One lady asked him a question. And she said, why is it that we come to church, we Christians, when we come to church and we get a, we get a breakthrough and, and we're, you know, we feel the presence of God, but then when we go home, it's all kind of oppression and all kind of stuff and all kind of problems keep popping up. And he looked at it and he said, it's your hair. She said, hair? He said, yeah, God's your glory. God's your covering. But all of you women are running around here with these wigs on your head from some other that's been dedicated to some demon, some deity. A lot of these hairs are dedicated from, from India. They get to the hair gods, South America. They kidnap women. They cut their hair off. They snatch people's hair. I say, uh, he said, you cover your, your glory with a wig. God is your glory. And you're saying, God, you're no longer my glory. Your wig is covering up. God made you beautiful the way you are with your natural hair. And so you're going to put a false hair, a false God on your head that causes demons to be attracted to your head. Now, I'm, I'm digging in some stuff. Don't throw, throw rocks at me. I'm just telling what the man said now. I'm going to wear my stenches. I'm going to put my stuff. If you want to go deeper in God, you might want to think about wearing your natural hair because he's your glory. And then he said, and then if you think about it, he said he's cosmetics. They, they, they mix animal stuff in it. I say the, he said the occultists and some of these pharmaceutical companies, he said what we would do is, this is what he said. He said what we would do is we would go to the graveyards and cemeteries and we would get, dig up bones of people and crush it up and they mix it in with the makeup stuff and speak incantations and curses over that. And he said, we have the ability to see in the spirit realm their stars and their purposes. And what we'll do is we'll switch people's stars and grab the ones we want. And they, they should have been a doctor, but we'll make them a mechanic. They're spending their whole life being a mechanic when they should have been a doctor. Wow. They've switched around their destinies through occultism and through these seeing in the spirit. I said, wow, these guys, they, they're... They know more about what's going on than we do because we're blind. He said, he said, you people, you hear it. You hear the pastor say, don't do it, but you go ahead and do it anyway, and then you wonder why you're getting beat up. 
Think about it now. He said, he said, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. I can just go back 10, ten, uh, what, ten years? It was it been 10 years now since they came when they first started wearing earrings? Men started putting earrings in their ears. And I said, it's demonic. And some of the men got mad at me. I said, it's a spirit of perversion in there and the spirit of this and that, the spirit of lust. And they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear it. But then, when they, went, then they went through all kind of hell. Because they didn't want to listen. Their ears became dull to hearing the truth. I'm going to do it anyway because that's the way the world is and that's the way, and that's cool and you're just trying to bind me up and you're just trying to put me in a bondage. I, no, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep you free. The enemy uses that psychology to keep us in bondage. Oh, it's okay. You can do it. But you can't do it with God if you want the deeper things of God. Now, you don't have to have, you can go ahead and do what you want to do and keep getting the headaches and, and all that stuff. And every time you look around, you got a problem, that's fine, and keep calling out to God. But I'd rather walk into that place where there's no in-between. Yeah. Amen. I'm not trying to walk close to the line. I'm trying to walk deeper in God. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Your eyes got to be able to see in the spirit in this hour. We got to be able to see in the spirit. As I said years ago, I said there's going to come a time that the spirit realm and the natural realm is thinning out where you can see open manifestations of demons coming in and out of the spirit. And, it's, and, you can, and people are seeing it. And just manifest. You be walking around, you see a little shadow on your corner of your eye over there. You be seeing. You see a little shadow. Oh, what's that? You, know, you can see them shadows. You know, I can see shadows. Because you know, I learned in the, when I was in the projects and I was a kid, you see a little. Uh, Mice running across the. Oh, yeah. watch, what is that? I, yeah. I see you. I saw you. <laughs> you didn't think I saw you. I saw you running along the baseboard. Amen. Yeah. Under the radiator. I got you. You see these things out of. The, it's like a shadow. Your spiritual eyes. You can see and you can sense when the enemy. You can tell when a uh, when the devil comes into a room while you're sleeping. You can feel a presence, or you hear footsteps, or something like that. Those are ears are hearing, hearing uh, uh, spiritual ears. So you have a spiritual eye, spiritual ears, and a spiritual mouth. And God's trying to get us to begin to vocalize and use these tools, these spiritual tools now, and not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Jesus told the man at Bethesda, they brought him a blind man, and they said, touch him. He took the blind man by hand, led him out of the town. When he had split, spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him, and he asked him if he saw. And he looked up, and he said, I see men as trees walking. I see, but I'm not seeing clearly. I need an adjustment. And Jesus laid hands on him again and made him look. He was restored and saw every man clearly <clears throat> so this man was blind but yet he saw his trees he was seeing in the spirit realm but he wasn't seeing clearly and Jesus said well you're still in the spirit I need to bring you into the natural man realm and, and he opened up his eyes <clears throat> there was a pro prophet let me wrap it up I'm through excuse me this cold is trying to so, there was a prophet in the old testament that was blind and uh, King Saul had rebelled against God, and he went to the wicked witch of Endor, and, and he said, uh, it was that the, it's, good, it's one of the stories where they, the, the, the king had sent his wife to the prophet. He was blind, and he told, he told his servant, he said, oh, behold, the king's wife is at the door. <clears throat> hold fast the door because the child's going to die. I forgot what king it was, but the prophet was able to see. Even though he was blind, he could see in the spirit what was going to take place. So even though you don't have your natural sight, people that are blind make up for it with their spiritual senses, and they can see certain things in the spirit realm. You are a witness <clears throat> when you see. John 9, verse 1, Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind by birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents or that he was born blind? Jesus asked and said, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. 
but that the works of God should be made manifest in this man. Everything is not a devil that you're going through. Everything is not a thing about you. It ain't about you. It's about your witness for Christ. Now, man, you can stand up and say, I've been healed of cancer. Now you can stand up and say, my, my mom has been healed of cancer. Now you can stand up and say, I've been walking and with a shut all these years, and God has been faithful, and he delivered me, and all that. Now you can say, I didn't have a house. Now I got a house. Amen. I didn't have a job. Now I got a job. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have this, and I didn't. You are a witness for his glory. So a lot of times, it's not just the devil. He said, you don't have to be in sin. God's just testing you. Amen. You have the power to open eyes and close eyes. That's, this is why I'm pushing that because if God can close eyes, he can open eyes. <clears throat> Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, Simeon, Saul, Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. He said, you full of subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil, the enemy of righteousness. Wilt thou cease to pervert thy right ways? And behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. He closed his natural eyes. The apostle had authority and power to close. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close. I'm through. The power is coming. Let me say this again. The power is coming. <coughs> Cause people to be blind for a season because of their wickedness. Some people are wicked. For, for, for a witness to Christ or be deaf for a season or be dumb. I had a young man in Africa, as I said, I always had a testimony that he was in the service and he didn't believe what I was prophesied and God struck him dumb. He couldn't talk. And he didn't get to talk until he repented 12 hours later. And he came back and gave his testimony. He said, I didn't believe. And the Lord stuck, shut my throat, my vocal cords, shut him up. God can do, if he can Control. If the devil can control those areas, why can't we? If the devil can give you arthritis and you can't turn your hand all crooked and all that, if the devil can give you diabetes and the devil can give you all these parts, how come we can't heal all of that stuff and, and, and do the reverse of what he's trying to do? We got more power than he has, amen? All power has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven and in earth, amen? Make, <clears throat> make me to see. Make me to illuminate. To shed rays. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of glory in his inheritance of the saints. What the exceeding greatness of the power. See, you just can't read Ephesians 1.18 and just stop at verse 18 because all of them got commas and semicolons in it, which means a continuing thought. And what necessary. <clears throat> Who got that scripture? Who can read that? Somebody read that. <clears throat> I'm going to do, I'm have to do Baptist. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amen. That we may know. There's a hope of his, yeah. The hope of his calling. Push the bottom. Down. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Turn that mic on, Kurt. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and yes. power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. Amen. Philip, all in all. So all the gifts belong to us. All the power belongs to us. So now we got to learn how to step into this realm. What I'm telling you is something new. I pioneered, you know, we pioneered the prophetic. We've pioneered deliverance. One of the forefront forerunners of deliverance and forerunners of, 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 of prophetic and the apostolic. Now I'm pioneering the glory, stepping into the glory realm. We're gonna pi we're gonna go to another realm of of ministry, another realm of, of being a saint of God. Amen. I once was blind, now I see. Amen. Let me stop there. My voice and stopped and gave out and kaput. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, <clears throat> I can't even pray. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
Father, we thank you. I pray that the eyes of our understanding, that you would enlighten us this morning. I pray for every person here that you would give a visitation, that you would open up our spiritual eyes. You said we have not because we ask not. So, Father, we ask for this gift. We ask for the giftings. Not everyone will get it, but uh, those that need it and, and that you will use us in this end times, that we will see the plans of the enemy. We will be able to set the captives free uh, from bondages, from issues. We pray <clears throat> for situations that we don't have the answer for, but we need your answer. So, Father, open up our ears, open up our eyes that we may see and hear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One of the things is, uh, I wish I could talk a little bit better. Let me see. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, I was talking with Manuel and Sharon Tuesday night, and he was talking about, you know, he invented this arrow and his invention and stuff, and he was saying that, Three times now, he had people that were, were going to finance, you know, his invention. And he said each time the person said they would do it, they died. Wow. Wow. So I'm saying, okay, there's got to be something operating yes. in the spirit blocking you or blocking the blessings in your bloodline that the demon is blocking or trying to keep you from getting to where you get. You know, you got prophecies about being meat there and stuff like that, but the devil will fight you. So that's why I'm praying that he will open up our eyes to see tough cases and tough things that we can't see in your background what your ancestors did. You know, there's a history in your bloodline, and God got all that written down. And in this end time, we need to find out. You're trying to figure out why my life all messed up. Well, we go back to your great, great, great grandfather. He was doing all kind of crazy stuff. And the demons have a right to be in your bloodline because they made sacrifice to those devils. Uh, just let me finish this up. The, the, the occult doctor said one of the things they do is they go in and dig up a family's bones. You say, you say in Africa, they just bury the bones, you know, they just bury them. And they go dig them up and they make incantations, they grind them up, make incantations. And they invoke spirits in the people's bloodlines that the ancestors worship. See, the ancestors worshiped certain spirits and dedicated their children to those spirits. So they go dig up those ancestors' bones and invoke curses to steal the blessings of the next of the generations that already come. And so they steal their blessings from what the ancestors did. They give the demons right to keep afflicting people's bloodlines. It's, it's interesting how the devil, how he operates in, against us, but no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's why we break the curses. That's why we need discernment. That's why we need the gifts to really, really get it. I'm sure everybody in there has a question about your bloodline. And you don't have the answers. But God's got it. And I believe in God. He's in this end times. He's going to be in the beginning to reveal some of the stuff that has blocked us and blocked our, our children. I know I had the in the Cherokee blood and my, my, my bloodline. So I know the Cherokee part, and you know, they worship all kind of spiritual things. So I don't know what yeah. what's going on with that thing. But let me stop because my voice is gone. Uh, there'll be no service Tuesday night, Christmas Eve. <laughs> Amen. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We're not cooking on Christmas. My wife's not cooking. I don't think we're cooking. We're going to be in a hotel somewhere. Hallelujah. We ain't cooking nothing. Kitchen clothes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, bless you. Love you. And uh, next Sunday and then Tuesday night, New Year's Eve night, we'll be here for 730. Be done by 9, 9, 10, whatever. <clears throat> Have a good time.